Hello YouTubers. Well, uh, part two, uh, the internal combustion engine and uh, the workings of a two-stroke engine. In the previous video, I talked about the four-stroke engine and uh, the uh, auto cycle uh, is accomplished. The induction, compression, ignition and exhaust is, com is conducted above the piston in the chamber above the piston and the gases are taken in and exhausted by mechanical valves. The difference in a two-stroke is that uh, the same cycle has to be completed but the gases are taken in and taken out of the cylinder by holes or ports in the cylinder and the piston then plays an important part in opening of those ports. And the action now takes place above and below the piston as well so the crankcase becomes part of the whole uh, system. Here you can see a picture of a very modern two-stroke engine. The uh, hole on the left is the exhaust port and those ports on the outside of the cylinder are called transfer ports which uh, I will describe their function uh, when I describe the cycle. Okay, so I'll do my best to describe uh, the uh, two-stroke system. Uh, very difficult without diagrams, but I'll do my best. Um, there are two things happening at the same time, so of course it's going to be difficult, but never mind. Uh, let us start with the piston at the uh, bottom of the stroke. Uh, as the piston moves up, it exposes the exhaust port. Um, there's a reduced pressure in the crankcase and through atmospheric pressure, uh, the port attached to a carburetor draws in a mixture of, uh, of air and fuel. Um, at the same time, as the piston uh, goes further up the barrel, it is then um, compressing uh, the mixture from a previous stroke, uh, which is um, entered there by the transfer port. The piston reaches top dead center, the mixture is fired and the and the rod returns and uh, as it returns the top of the piston exposes the top edge of the exhaust port and shortly after that the transfer ports open and a new charge of fuel is let in. Whilst that is happening um, beneath the piston, as the piston goes down, the uh, inlet port is being closed and an increased pressure into the crankcase pushes more fuel up into the transfer ports into the cylinder and the cycle repeats and repeats. But since there is this new fuel going into the um, cylinder at the same time as the exhaust is going out. This is one of the main problems of the two strokes and there are many ways in which um, you know we try to um, alleviate that and, and uh, increase the efficiency. So going back now over 60 years to my early days of motorcycling, these two-stroke engines worked, but they were extremely, extremely inefficient. And uh, uh, so I suppose myself and many others wanted to sort of improve the performance of them. Uh, a fairly obvious sort of first improvement might be to get some more power out of them, some more bang by letting more fuel in, which would be fairly easy to do you could uh, lower the inlet uh, inlet port or cut a bit off the bottom of the piston so the inlet opened earlier and uh, and let more fuel in uh, but of course it uh, would uh, the movements are symmetrical so of course if you opened it earlier then you would close it later which would be um, which would be a detriment and I came up with the idea that I wanted to find some way to incorporate a reed valve. So, what is a reed valve? 
Well, this is a picture of a modern reed valve from a modern engine. Um, a carburetor would be attached to it and the hole would be uh, bolted into the crank case. And it works by uh, the negative and positive pressures uh, as the piston uh, as the piston arises and has a negative pressure in the crankcase then the uh, reeds will open allowing gas to come in but the important thing is of course as the piston starts to defend descend then the reeds close and are able to send the fuel up through the transfer ports into the piston so it becomes an asymmetrical system so I knew of the existence of these reed valves that were used in uh, other engines uh, but uh, I thought well if I can uh, make one of those uh, then uh, a lot of the problems would be solved. Well no way could I make a reed valve like that and recast crank cases and all the modifications that would be necessary. All I had was a uh, an ordinary lathe. Uh, but I thought if I can design one and make one uh, so that it would fit between the carburetor and the inlet connection to the cylinder, then I thought that might work and in fact that is what I did. Uh, my design, which unfortunately I have no pictures of and I have no bits of it left to show you, uh, I designed in the shape of a cone. I mean, imagine a traffic cone or an ice cream cone and um, I was going to put my uh, steel uh, reeds onto holes cut out in that cone. Well, I only had an ordinary lathe, so I used a bit of hexagonal uh, material so that I could uh, index it round onto six faces. I cut holes in the in the cone. I milled the surface till they were perfectly smooth, and. Um, I then attached my, um, in my case, uh, thin steel strips of, um, of metal uh, that um, would open and close according to the pressures. And um, it worked, and it did work very satisfactorily. Um, so I think that was quite a... Um, an invention if you like or a way of using a reed valve that uh, in a two-stroke engine that hadn't been done before it's quite interesting I think that this was something I did in I think I don't know 1950 um, and when we had the Japanese invasion of the motorcycle industry um, with all of their wonderful machines uh, lo and behold, all two-stroke engines had a reed valve situated um, exactly where I had put it. So, um, I mean, who thought of it first? I have no idea, but it did work. Um, just to describe the two-strokes of the early days, one of the problems was that um, when you went downhill or you shut off the throttle for any length of time, there was an accumulation of unburnt fuel. And when you wanted to get any sort of uh, pickup and uh, you either had to pull the clutch in and rev it like mad to clear all the uh, all the contamination or you just had to open the throttle and wait till it had um, achieved the right amount of revs to clear it. So being a trials rider what I wanted was a very uh, regular tick over and a clean pickup and uh, the reed valve achieved that for me. Other of the backroom boys uh, who wanted to make machines go quicker well then there were so many things that uh, they did that uh, helped to do that in those very early days and uh, a lot of the uh, ideas that were formed then are now incorporated in modern machines. Um, 
one of the first developments in the sort of go quick stuff was done by DKW of Germany who recognised that the exhaust system uh, being part of the whole was very important and it was uh, you know research that uh, when the exhaust gases go out they go out in pulses uh, and when they reach the end of the exhaust system they're reflected back as positive pulses and if you could time that so that whilst the a large exhaust port that you'd made was still open then you would have a way of uh, not losing any compression. This is my grandson's Honda two-stroke motocross machine. All I want you to notice really is the intricate sort of snake-like uh, design of the exhaust system that they used. And there are many other ways of doing this with sort of uh, um, mechanical ways of keeping the exhaust port closed to a reasonable size until you reach a certain amount of revs and then um, you know it increases so that's my story of uh, the development of two strokes I could go on forever and ever and ever of course but um, I hope that has uh, interested you and um, the only um, one of my um, devices that still exists is in the um, motorbike of my friend who has got this very old motorcycle which has a Villiers uh, 197 engine in. must be one or two others that exist on bikes that I put them in that were subsequently sold but goodness knows where they are now uh, but um, two strokes are wonderful machines and the uh, sound of a sound of a high revving two stroke is pleasure to my ears so If you're still with me, goodbye.